Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, sir, for uh, giving me this opportunity to take part in the budget discussion, general discussion on the budget for 2023-24 financial year. Sir, I rise to oppose this budget proposals for the financial year 23-24 because these proposals of this budget is not addressing the genuine concerns of the people of India in particular regarding unemployment, poverty and inflation. The proposals envisaged in the budget is not sufficient to address all these main general issues which is concerning the downtrodden, the, the, the most of the population of our country. Sir, it may kindly see the speech of the Honorable Finance Minister, Madam, starts with, begins with the sentence, I quote, We envision a prosperous and inclusive India in which the fruits of development reach all regions and citizens, especially our youth, women, farmers, other backward communities, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, unquote. Madam Finance Ministry speaking about the inclusive growth in our budget, special paragraphs are also being enunciated in the budget speech, but if you go through micro-level scrutiny of the speech, it is seen that the term minority is deliberately avoided in the inclusive development which is being envisaged in the budget speech of Honorable Finance Minister. This is not only in the Finance Minister's speech, also in the presidential speech also, SC, ST, OBC, weaker sections of the society, Northeastern people, Jammu Kashmir people, but it is quite unfortunate to note that Normally, the term minority is also there in the weaker sections of the society. It is missing in the speech that itself shows that there is a deliberate act of discrimination against the minorities is reflected in the budget for which I strongly oppose it. The main allegation I would like to pose is that the budget is not, proposals are not sufficient to meet the purposes envisaged in the preamble or in the, in the preface of the budget. Why it is so? Because I do appreciate the government and the finance minister for maintaining the fiscal deficit at 6.4% and maintaining the growth at 7%. Yes, the country is having a very good economic growth. Even after the COVID-19 pandemic situation, we are able to have the 7% of the GDP growth and we are able to honor the commitment given in the 22-23 speech of the Honorable Finance Minister that the fiscal deficit will be contained at 6.4%. I, I do pay appreciation on my behalf and on my behalf of my party. But my specific question to the Honorable Minister is, when there is an economic growth of 7% and when we are able to contain the fiscal deficit at 6.4% as declared in the previous budget, why we are not able to address the issues of unemployment, poverty and inflation? Sir, Chairman, sir, the unemployment, I am not going to the statistics. I know the positive of the time. CMI, 8.3% is the rate of employment, unemployment growth. Na na National Statistics Office says that 7.1%. Sir, the post-independent India has never seen such an exponential growth of unemployment in this country. That is the first issue which I would like to make. And what are the labor intensive sectors? Agriculture, mining, manufacturing, trade, hotel, transport, telecommunications. Sir, except telecommunication sector, there is a growth of 13.7% in the telecommunication sector. All other sectors, there is no change in the growth. Therefore, the industrial production, if you see, the growth rate is 1.6%. It is less than 22, 23. Manufacturing sector, the growth is 9.1%. 2021, it was 21, 22, it was 11.5%. That means 2% reduction. If this be the ground reality, I would like to ask the Honorable Finance Minister, please tell the House how you are going to address the issue of unemployment, number one. Sir, number two, regarding the poverty, I am not going to the details. Now, India has been pushed into... 132 out of 191 countries, as far as this hunger, sorry, the Human Development Index is conducted, this is a UNDP program report, UNDP report. The multi-dimensional poverty index goes to show that 16.4% of the population is multi-dimensional poverty index. 
18.7% of the population are vulnerable to the multidimensional poverty index. This is the situation. There are around 48 crores of the people under poverty line. Nidhi Ayog says that more than 50 crores of the people. And if that be the case, you yourself, the government is admitting that 81 crores of people are being provided with the free ration. That means they are also in the poverty. So this is an accepted fact by the government. So in such a situation, I would like to pose the question again, when there is an economic growth of 7% even after COVID-19 pandemic, when we are able to have a good growth, why we are not able to address the issue of the poverty which is increasing? That is the second question which I would like to pose, sir, regarding the third question is inflation. Regarding the inflation, what is the rate of inflation? 6.7%. Sir, it is above the upper band of 6%. There is a provision in the RB Amendment Act of 2016 that when the rate of inflation exceeds 6%, the upper band, there is a mandatory provision in the part on the part of the RBI that the matter should be given, informed to the government through a letter. And it is quite unfortunate to see that RBI should inform the government through a letter the reasons for inflation exceeding 6% that is upper band. I would like to ask the Honorable Finance Minister when we ship reply. First question is whether the RBI had written to you regarding the reasons for the inflation. If so, please disclose the reasons for the inflation as given by the RBI. Also, I would like to ask the Honorable Finance Minister why the minutes of the recent monetary policy committee meeting is not made public and not available in the public domain as there is a mandatory provision that the MPC meeting minutes should be published in the public domain. Why it is not so? That is the third question which I would like to ask. Sir, I am concluding, sir. Sir, 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 chairman, sir, one second. So the basic principles of your liberalized economic policy is wealth creation will give employment and development or leads to employment and development. Unfortunately, that is missing in our country. I am not going to the current account deficit. I am passing on it, sir. But one last one is regarding the direct taxes. Sir, I may be given two minutes. I will conclude just by elucidating an example. So the tax proposal, the direct tax proposal, the Honorable Prime Minister as well as the entire Treasury benches were thumbing the desk when an announcement, populistic announcement made by the Honorable Finance Minister, up to 7 lakh there is no income tax. Sir, this is also a jumla. I will, I will explain, sir. If you are having an income of 9.5 lakhs in the present tax regime, you are entitled to have 4.5 lakhs of deduction and exemption, then you need not pay any pie of tax. If you are having 9.5 lakhs of income, annual income, as per the present tax, all the tax regime, you need not pay anything because you are having an entitlement of 4.5 lakh rupees of exemptions and deductions by ATC, ATC, CC, and all. I'm not going to all the details. Suppose if you are having an income of 7 lakh 10,000 rupees, so I will, I will conclude with that sentence. If you are having an income of 7 lakh 10,000 rupees, you have to pay 26,000 of rupees as tax. If you are having 9.5 lakhs of rupees, as per the new tax regime, you have to pay 45,000 rupees as income tax. Which is better, sir, I am not going to the comparative study of all these things because of this time. So I would like to say, all the, that means this is also just a jumla to mislead the middle class. So with all these observations, I would like to say that the budget proposals are not favoring the common public at large. Even the middle class, hence I strongly oppose the proposals for the year 23-24. Thank you very much, sir, for providing this much of time.